This, this session is an introduction to RAD and the uh, um, the basic my my goal with this discussion is not to um, get a, a a detailed look at the code or even a summary look at the code. Really, we can do that if we want, but um, I'm not. I'll I'll say up front, I'm not a developer, um, and for this purposes of this session, I want to mostly be an evangelist for this new feature and give you guys enough information to where it'll ho you'll hopefully want to follow up and learn more um, from the folks that um, can answer your in-depth questions. Um, so first off, I know that there's some folks in here that have used framework on framework are, are the basis of our RAD layer before. Um, Javier, you have, right? Peter, have you? I tried this. Just a little bit. Chris, how about you? No. Okay, anybody else? Marco? All right, good. Um, how many of, of the rest of you all, and I'll, I'll raise my hand first, do not consider yourself a developer? Okay. Um, I, I think that, uh, well, let's, start, let's just, let me just jump into it. Um, the kind of the five areas that I want to cover in this session are what's red and why is it important, a brief history um, about it, some of its main features, take a, a real simple look at a basic RAD component and then give you some information about how to follow up and get started and learn more. Um, to just sort of pick up on that question I asked how many consider yourselves developers, I think you know where I was headed with that was that really who's, who's RAD for? Um, and that ties into what is RAD and what, why is, is it important? Um, RAD stands for Rapid Application Development. It's a, it's a set of, of code that's, that's going to be installed with Joomla 3 so that um, it makes it quicker and easier for you to develop a Joomla extension if you want, if you choose to. And especially in my mind, if you want to distribute a Joomla extension. And so I'm making that distinction between you know, write an extension or, or distribute it um, from the standpoint of my, most of my work is as a, what I would call a site builder. I'm not a developer, but a customer will come to me and they want a website and I'll build them a website for it. And as much as I can, I'll use existing extensions. I might use a CCK to, to do some customized um, uh, content work for them. Um, and CCKs for content construction kits are pretty mature in Joomla and offer a lot of features. There's some, the, the, the sample RAD component that we'll look at in this session, um, you could do the same thing with uh, one of the Joomla CCK components. But what I think the, uh, what a key advantage over of the RAD layer compared to the CCK components is that if you wrote an extension and you wanted to distribute it, then um, this is a perfect solution for that as opposed to if you wanted to, let's say if you wrote a, um, a, a solution with a CCK, then you've got to distribute that CCK extension you know, along with your customizations for it. So if you learn how to code with RAD, then you sort of simplify that process. It also opens you up to a lot more um, flexibility and options in terms of what you can do instead of just being limited to the, um, to the functions that the CCK has. And then another benefit is that your, this, this RAD layer really uses the, the simple basic core backend interface for all the other standard Joomla core components. So, you know, one of the, um, one of the complaints, uh, w w some of the, some of the feedback that I get from clients, and maybe you do too, is that, you know, install five different extensions, you have five different sort of user interfaces and buttons and arrangement and layouts of things. This RAD component really follows the basic simple core Joomla administrative layout, so that's another plus of it. Um, 
Y yes, Marco. Uh, <coughs> what you just said obviously is all true, but uh, to me it feels like, like you phrase it, you might perceive as RAD as just a something that's very simplistic or could only do the kind of things that a CCK could do, but uh, I think the, obviously the opposite is true. It, it's a full flag, you can do just about yeah, everything with it. Uh, it's not limited to uh, yeah, simple stuff. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Say, so. Yeah, so I, I try to say that when I said that, you know, it gives you a lot more flexibility, but yeah, good point, and thanks for expanding on that. I mean, basically, you can do anything you want to with this. Um, you can't do anything. The the more the deeper and the more complex you go, the more of your code you're going to have to write. Um, but it'll still be less than kind of a conventional classic Joomla component um, work that you'll need to do. Um, another some other reasons why I think is important that may be of less selfish interest to us as individuals, but in terms of looking at the project as a whole and, and the growth potential for it. I mean, to me, um, you know, what Joomla is, is not in competition with anybody, including Drupal or WordPress. That's just my personal opinion because we're not selling anything, right? Um, but we are, in a way, in a competition for the mind share of developers. Um, we want to attract developers to the Joomla platform so that they'll want to help uh, develop for it add features to it, improve it, um, uh, you know, all of those things that will make Joomla better. And the more things we can do to make Joomla more attractive to, to new prospective developers compared to other platforms, the stronger I think Joomla's future growth is going to be. And so I really feel like this, this addition of the RAD layer for Joomla 3.2 is going to, not immediately, but over time it's going to boost Joomla's popularity and we'll, we'll develop more of a reputation of um, not being, in, in my mind, just a, a good balance between ease of use and power and flexibility, which we are, but we'll also be known as the, um, you know, the easiest CMS platform to develop custom and distribute custom extensions for. Um, any questions or comments about that? Y'all all, please feel free to keep popping in questions or comments. So, uh, let's see. Uh, other uh, kind of, an, another general point is that, um, you know, because it, it allows a quicker and easier way to develop Joomla components, it, there's also less code that you have to write, which means less bugs, less security issues, and lower maintenance. All right, so a brief history of it. Um, Nicholas Dionisopoulos and the Akiba extensions. Many of y'all are familiar with him. I, I'll bet is Akiba Backup is one of the most popular extensions in the, in the uh, Joomla extension directory. Um, Admin Tools is another really popular extension that he wrote. And so Nicholas originally wrote uh, what he called Framework on Framework. Um, as, as his RAD layer for his own individual extensions. And um, so basically for the many of the same reasons that I just shared about earlier, it's quicker and easier for him to develop his extensions. Um, another requirement that Nicholas had for himself was to make it easier to support different Joomla versions. There's um, some some code differences to be able to write specifically for different Joomla versions. And um, so with the code that he wrote for framework on framework, um, he would only have to reference different functions within framework on framework that were smart enough to be able to um, uh, access different parts of the framework the underlying Joomla framework code depending on what Joomla version you're using. So um, simplified support and maintenance for it too. Um, and that was, uh, so Nicholas offered to contribute his code framework on framework to the Joomla project um, and uh, it was reviewed by a, a working group within the Joomla project called the RAD Working Group 
and um, they looked at a number of options is my understanding and, and they decided essentially to accept Nicholas's offer of contribution for his framework on framework. Um, made some changes to it to uh, make it uh, integrate better with existing code that was in the Joomla framework um, because there was some code that he wrote that, that duplicated, overlapped with that code. So to, to simplify that, um, uh, some, some tweaks were done to it. And um, I mentioned that there was a code sprint in Italy that, um, uh, that, that was focused on this uh, uh, red layer. So um, that's a brief history of it. For, uh, for the main features that uh, the RAD layer offers is that first off, there's a, we, the, uh, the term framework gets used a lot and there's, there's a lot of different things that different people will mean when you talk about a framework. In, in a typical sense of the word, a framework would be um, kind of a separate standalone set of um, functions and methods that you would use instead of um, another framework. And um, the RAD layer is different in that it isn't a separate framework, but it lives on top of, it, it uses the Joomla framework itself. And so that's where the FOF kind of original name came from, framework on framework. It, it doesn't replace it, it's, it lives alongside of it essentially. And it's uh, compatible with Joomla 2.5, 3.0, 3.1, and 3.2. And for the future, it'll also be automatically compatible with 3.5. So that same set of code will be there um, that'll work with um, all those different versions. One of the other key features of it is that Nicholas is kind of passionate about not repeating yourself um, for code. and, and um, my understanding when you write a classic conventional Joomla extension, you will end up um, writing similar code in different files um, to, to uh, perform the same functions. And, and Nicholas has gone to a lot of work to, uh, to eliminate a lot of that. And we'll, we'll see um, later on um, what some of those gains are in terms of the number of lines of code that you have to write as well as the number of files that you have to create to, um, to create a, a simple component. Um, the, what allows you to uh, not have to repeat yourself so much um, and cut down on that amount of code that you have to write is the idea of convention over configuration. And basically that means that um, there's some rules for how you would set up folders, how you would set up file names, um, how you would set up um, you know, s some different um, references in your code that are all tied to the name of your component and some standardized um, you know, folder names and file names. And as long as you follow those rules, then you don't have to, then the, the RAD layer itself will manage putting toolbars up there and, and knowing how to, um, how to display menu items that you would go f and access from the, from the Joomla back end and, and um, displaying back end forms and front end displays. So um, if you, if, once you learn and understand sort of what the rules, the conventions are, then you don't have to configure as much or write as much code. So that's what convention over configuration means. Um, there's, uh, it, it, it allows you, if you want to, um, to write your view templates purely in XML, um, as opposed to having to write HTML and or any PHP code. And so if you haven't looked at XML much, we'll take a look at it in a second here. Pretty simple, um, structured uh, way of presenting data. And once you get a look at it, you, you know, you'll, you'll understand pretty quickly um, how that works. And you have the, an option to, to use PHP and HTML coding for your templates if you want to get more advanced and more, have more control over it. But if you just want to write a simple, um, have a simple 
set of views and displays for your components. You don't have to go to hardly any work at all. And then uh, uh, finally, it also offers support for hierarchical model view controller structure. So um, without getting in too deep to it, because I'll get in over my head pretty quick if, if we try to get into deep to it, but sort of the, the underlying architecture for a, um, for a, a, a Joomla component um, has three parts, a model, a view, and a controller. And um, the, there's three separate functions that each of those parts are responsible for in terms of rendering, managing, displaying your component. The, um, and they're, they're structured that way to keep things easier to maintain and so that you can reuse code bits for, um, for different applications and uses. So the, um, the, and the three pieces all go together. There's, a, there's at least one model and at least one view and at least one controller that will all tie together to, um, to perform a task. So the model kind of performs a business logic. The view d controls the display um, of uh, your component and the controller is, I think of it kind of like, um, um, you know, the, the traffic light that um, or, or the switch in a, in a network uh, metaphor, you know, the router or the switch that's routing traffic from one area to the next. So the Marco. And the, the, the paradigm that I usually use to explain this concept is the one with the remote control. Okay. Your VCR or your DVD player and your television screen. Uh, obviously remote control being the controller. The VCR or the DVD player being the model, model. and the TV or the beam being the screen the being the view. That's good. Thanks. Yes. All right. Um, and so, and so the the hierarchical. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> so the hierarchical part. So those are the three parts: model, view, controller, and the hierarchical part means that you can reuse the same views in different different models or different controllers can access the same view and you can share you can share views between different um, models and controllers um, is there a is there a better definition than that chris javier for HMV? peter yeah for hmvc in terms of what the what that gives you beyond just a regular generic mvc I think that the key is, is that word hierarchical because you can, uh, you know, at the moment, if, you, if you're inside a controller, you've got code in, or you're inside a model or something like that, you can't then suddenly instantiate another controller somewhere and have that run through the FPC architecture and give you the response. And the HMVC will actually allow you to do that. So, you're, you know, you might be buried somewhere deep in, in, in a model somewhere and say, well, actually, I want, to, I want to instantiate this controller from this other component somewhere and get some output from it. And at the moment, you can't really do that, but HMVC will already all right, and so Javier, anything to add or subtract no, to that? As a practical example, imagine that you need to build a module uh, for Joomla that lists the, the context from the com context. So ju with just a line of code, you can have this list because you don't code actually the module. Ju you just call the, the controller on that lists the list of the of the context. So you, it's the dry concept that you say it's. It don't, you don't need to repeat more lines of code. It's already code. And so, so, so what's the what's the main difference between H and MVC and MVC? Oh, I think it's a that flexibility that allows you to not be locked within one triad. They call it of one okay. model, one view, one controller. And like you know, Chris referenced, yeah. you could you could break out of that. Um, uh, not in, you could break out of that triad to reference your model could reference a, a controller that's used in another component. Yeah, basically. So, so if you're inside one triad, you can actually start pull data and get from another triad. So you can do this now as well. You can extend. Uh, you can include file from content yeah. and extend in your class. And use it now as well. Yeah, you can, but it's not particularly. 
clever. It's yeah, but it tends to break quite often. So, yeah. uh, so does I mean, does that mean that other ABC structures are they're all compatible with one another? So you can start using um, a model from another. <coughs> what does it mean? Each you're at yeah. So you've got a, effectively you've got a tree structure yeah. to all these different MVCs. So you have one MVC pool, another pulls another MVC. So it, is it Steve? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So I mean that's a that's a really good question that you asked, and I'm not sure if I know the answer. Is the answer no, or you're shaking well, your head yes. because mm -hmm. MVC is a very uh, discussed topic here yeah. yeah. in terms of. Uh, purity and the purists uh, that say, well, Joomla doesn't have an MVC in the strictest uh, sense of the way. So it's it's a concept, it's a design pattern uh, that is used. It's a way of thinking that you can reuse. Uh, the thought that you be able to arbitrarily <coughs> reuse some model one on one from something else, I love that. Yeah, that's what's going through my mind is like compatibility and jumping from one to another. Well, within Joomla, that's something else, but from another oh, yeah, architecture, from another architecture yeah, yeah. then uh, probably not. But it's a design pattern, it's a way of thinking of this uh, span of control of components and uh, yeah, splitting it up as uh, responsibilities. So, to kind of take what Marco said and also what Chris said, if few minutes ago, like, you know, it, it, it might break sometimes. Um, from, from layman's terms, and you guys check me if you agree or disagree, um, or, or want to put it better than, than I will, um, I would say, you know, if you wanted to really leverage the full power of the HMVC, you better not assume that, the, that you could, with 100% confidence, um, from within your RAD written and developed component, call a controller from another Joomla core component even necessarily always. Is, would you agree with that or not? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, I've not tried doing it to any great degree, but certainly it's, it's not a terribly reliable way of doing it. Well, well, uh, uh, are we saying it's likely to be more reliable than just extending an existing class? I don't know what the aims of, of HMBC are in, in the fault code because I haven't really looked at that aspect of it. Well, um, I, I think it's uh, fair to say that it will be reusable within the context of the RAP and the FOF. That's what I was going to say. And that's the great benefit. Mm -hmm. As more and more stuff gets yeah. uh, produced in that framework, uh, then you should, with a fair degree of confidence, be able to include a view of a keeper yeah. pack of a subscription yep, or yep. whatever uh, something in your component and do with it yeah, you as you please mm -hmm. yeah. because it's all in this HMPC it's the same language mm -hmm. code or code. so I think and that's thanks Marco that's you know the way I was going to sort of say the same idea was that if I was going to start building a library of rad components then you know if I as long as I live within that rad the boundaries of that yeah. rad sandbox I'm probably going to have higher confidence that I can leverage that power of the HMBC. Um, I think that there's been some discussions that now that the RAD layer is being built into Joomla 3.2, that the next step may be that we want to convert some of the existing Joomla core components, begin converting those over to the RAD um, uh, architecture. And then once we do that, then that the boundaries of that sandbox will get bigger, right? Um, but I think that you know another thing that that <coughs> is kind of becoming apparent to me just from this discussion is you know just the the reality that um, all of the answers to these questions haven't been a hundred percent figured out yet, and so that's part of the you can look at it as. Uh, a good thing or a bad thing, I guess. Um, I'll look at it as a good thing from the standpoint that those of us who decide we want to get involved and, and work on this can have a direct say in what the future looks like for it. Um, and also that all options are open. And so there's a lot of room for um, involvement, creativity, and, and uh, um, 
ideas to help solve those issues and those problems. If you want something that you know will be 100% bulletproof from day zero um, in the end, then you know red's probably not the direction to go when 3.2 is launched. Uh, okay, so good questions, good thoughts on that. Any other questions or thoughts or comments about that? All right, um, a simple red component. Um, I did a little exercise just shortly before this uh, session in that I took, let me get out of this. I took, I, I, I installed a, a sample component used, developed with the red layer um, on a Joomla 3.2 site. And I looked at the, uh, the file structure for the front end files to support that compared to a simple classic Joomla component for um, web links is what I um, chose. So I did a, I just did a file count in a kilobyte size comparison on the front end. I ran out of time before I could do the, a back, a fuller back end comparison, but, uh, um, but I'll show you what I, what I saw from that. The uh, first off, well, no, let me, before I show you that spreadsheet, let me show you, uh, you know, what this, uh, this red sample component looks like. It's called a uh, com to do or a to do list. And basically, it's a it's a not not unusual Joomla type of component that allows you to create new items and then display and, and view, edit, update those items. So um, I created three items. This is my items view. If I click into one of them, I get my login screen again. And so here's just a, a simple back end form that has uh, fields for title, due date, status, published, unpublished, and then um, a text area here to, to fill in your information. Say again, Marco? Oh, I said no language. Yeah, there's, so there's a little language string missing there. Um, and then on the menu, on the menu side, if we were going to create a new menu, then we see down here that there's a there's an option for to-do list, and it just has one option, which is to list those to-do items. This is just kind of a way of showing that, you know, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you see what the file count and byte count comparison is. But um, and this is a simpler component than web links in the sense that this to-do list component doesn't have a categories um, list or views. It's, it's just listing items. Um, but I kind of subtracted those out too. But on the, uh, on the front end, I went ahead and set this up ahead of time. Here's a, here's a menu item for to-do list. And it displays, you know, it has a nice listing with, in, um, uh, for your to-do items. And we're gonna see some language string glitches again here, but it lists, uh, you know, the title up here, the, the due date, and the, the text box entry that all map to that. So it's a full-fledged, component from that standpoint. So if we compare that with web links, com web links, and let's just take a look at that on the back end for a second. Um, you know, from the items view, we've got a pretty simple, pretty comparable layout, right? Um, a title, um, another field, um, you know, instead of a due date, we've got a URL field. We've got a category drop down here, which com to do does not have. Um, there's an ordering field here that com to do does not have. But aside from that, it's all the same. Um, 
So to me, that's kind of the, the basic difference between the, the most complicated advanced part of web links is that it offers this separate categories view that'll, that will map over to your items view. All right. So now if we take a look at, this is just on the front end, the files that control the display that your users will have. These first two columns are for com web links and the second two columns are for the rad layer com to do. So I went through and just kind of inventoried the number of files that were required to be created to, to support com web links. And there's more files for com web links that I didn't include. Those are the ones that are specifically um, that are in charge of managing category and categories, plural. So I took out those files and just left in the, the files that, um, that, that didn't apply to that. So it would be sort of a closer apples to apples comparison. And you'll see, so there's, um, we're going down from starting from row two to row 19. So there's 18 files on the front end, part of the component for com web links that total 53 kilobytes to manage the front end part of that. And on the rad layer, instead of 18 files, we've got six files. And instead of 53 kilobytes, we've got six kilobytes. So some significant savings in terms of the amount of code that has to be written, has to be maintained, has to be updated. Um, and basically that, that framework on framework code base that's the rad layer is handling the difference, is handling the rest, and that's that con convention over configuration advantages with that, the don't repeat yourself parts with there too. So as far as the back end goes, um, I ran out of time to do a you know a full laundry list of file names and byte counts, but there was I found 22 files, not counting the category and categories controlling files on the back end for com web links, and I found 12 for, um, for the rad layer com to do. So um, about half as many on the back end and on the front end, um, you know, almost 90% less. Um, so. Have you made these files? Have you copied them from the web, the web links? How have you produced your um, to do? Yeah, so the way that I would do it is, um, and, and you guys that have worked with it more, um, you know, jump in, but there's this, this com to do is, a, is available as a downloadable sample component. And I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even bother starting off with com web links because it's that kind of different architecture. I would start with com to do, and I would do some copying and pasting from that. Um, and, and use com to do as your basis. And I've got a copy of that here locally. I can point you on the web to where you can download okay. it, yeah. um, and we can go on from there too. Marco, did you, did you have a? No. Okay. No. All right. All right. So um, let me take a look at before we go back to that. I mentioned uh, XML is a kind of key file type that the rad layer uses. So let's go, let's go take a look at that. Um, so I'm here under, um, on the, I'm gonna take a look at the back end uh, with uh, administrator components, com to do is the name of that sample component that I've got stalled, installed. Sorry. My, uh, um, I'm going to take a look at a view, some view files. So, this is going to take a look at the XML file that controls the single item view for this com to do list. So we're going to take a look at the XML file that controls this view right here. And that's the, this is that XML file. So um, 
you think when I look at an XML file, I think of it in terms of an HTML, um, you know, starting tag and ending tag and nested HTML tables. I'm that old back when you used to design web pages that way. But so we start off with the form. Well, it's, there's an XML tag. Um, and then there's an opening form tag, and if we go all the way down to the bottom, there's a closing form tag. And so we're opening and closing these XML tags um, with, with standard names field set. And then nested within that one layer is a set of fields. So we've got a field set name first for basic configuration. You'll see here at the end it's got a, a class of span 6. So that's referencing the kind of the bootstrap layout of span six columns here, and then this description um, field set will have another span six for it so that we get the side-by-side half-and-half view. But then um, all you do is define, uh, in this case, three fields that have the right parameters in there, and framework on framework, or the rad layer, sorry, um, it has a long list of field types, just like you'd expect in a CCK um, type of application. Let's go back and take a look at that. We'll find the, the RAD layer under, uh, you installed your Joomla site under libraries. And there's FOF, just for historical purposes, they kept that FOF name. And I think it's under the form folder. Then there's a field folder. And this shows you all the different field types that you can access within those XML forms. There's some pretty good documentation on all these as well. And one of the things, you know, so I'm, I sort of hinted at it earlier where I said in the future we can, we can grow this thing, there's flexibility, we can define what the future of it's like. I mean, there's sure room and there, there would be encouragement I would expect from everybody on the development side to say, if you've got some use cases or requirements for yourself or for your customers that would be new field types, you know, let's add them in there. Let's get them added in there. And the more, the merrier. Let's build these out and make this as, as uh, full-fledged as we can. But it's already got a, a good list in there. I'll guess 25 or 30 different field types that you can use out of the box. So uh, anyway, um, so there as we give it for the, uh, for the field title, for example. There's <coughs> field name title. It's, a, it's the type of text. And then there you just define the rest of your... Uh, field types in there, or parameters in there. So that's how you define that back end form. And um, I'll show you one other file that um, is, I think, a, a key one for the RAD layer. And that's so the, the uh, you know, kind of the, the big idea is that we're, we're storing the data in the database and then we're using the, um, the PHP code to pull data out of that database and display it in the way that we want it to um, with... Uh, the red layer, here's the, here's the file that I think is pretty close to just a straight SQL type of file that you could generate from PHP My Admin and you know tweak it just a little bit and have it be right in there and so that'll create your database table for you there. Um, so let's see, get back to I think we're yeah we're sh short on time here. Let me finish up for uh, for resources. So there's you know nobody wants to scribble all these long URLs down I guess and I don't blame you but um, you know come find me later if you want to but.
there's there's a pretty good documentation already out there on uh, the akibabackup.com website. There's a link to it under their support section. Um, and one of the nice things about, I mean, the framework on framework was available to any of us earlier. Um, Nicholas offered that code before it was accepted into the core of Joomla, but now that it is included in the core of Joomla, um, I think there's going to be a lot more attention on it, a lot more development of it, a lot more improvement of it, including documentation. That's always the ugly stepchild of open source, right, Chris? No disrespect to that. Chris has um, had a passion for documentation for a long time, but that's just always the 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 hardest thing and in, in seems like in some ways to get as much attention and as much effort and energy put to compared to the code as a whole and i think again with with part of the advantage of the rad layer is that it's going to lower the barriers of entry and hopefully attract more newbies or people who would like to become developers but they don't feel like they're um, you know, have the skill or experience yet. Well, the more that we can improve the documentation for this, the, the even more that's going to lower the barriers of entry. There's also a mailing list on Google Groups. Um, I think if you, if you don't want to write this URL down, you can just uh, uh, probably remember to do a search for Framework on Framework Google Group, and you can sign up for that. And um, the fellows who've been working to develop this and, and have, get it integrated in the core. There's a public mailing list there that you can um, join that as well. And then that um, sample component that I said, there's actually two of them that are out there now. Um, and I, I can share copies of that or I can help you find copies of that, Marco. Yeah. Guy, if you just remember the link to the groups, on top of the groups, okay, before you start, there's a reference to documentation, all kinds of interesting study stuff. So if you remember, remember that, Groups listing, then you can find the other stuff there. Yes. Right there. Yes. Documentation. Um, so here, yeah, the good, good point. There. Yeah, so yeah, great. Um, there's com to do, a link to it there. Yeah. There's videos that um, yes. Nicholas has given on uh, Jane Jane Beyond, Jab 12 looks like. Great. Um, and here's the, uh, here's the existing documentation that's um, that's there now on you can download that as a PDF and it goes let's see if this uh, darn it I'm getting Nicholas to fix that work that's um This is the link that I wanted. Um, so a better link off that Google Groups than the, than the one that I shared on that last slide. But as we scroll down through here, you can see there's already a, a pretty good list of documentation there, including on the field types um, that give some good examples about how to use it. So that's our RAD layer um, coming out in, in Joomla 3.2. Um, I'm going to, my next challenge for myself is going to be to learn how to add on that categories aspect to a, to a RAD component so that I can kind of match up with, uh, you know, not just defining items and publishing listing items, but also tying them to categories like um, you can do on, cat, on com web links and other um, components. But uh, I think it'll be fun to see what happens with the RAD layer, and um, I think it's a really good, positive um, feature for Joomla, and I hope you all will want to dig in and, and learn more about it. Any any other questions or comments? Uh, it's well, Gary, right? No, it's very, um, the, uh, the question is, I mean, do you see in the future things like uh, the core Joomla components actually moving on to the RAD layer because it's easier I, th I think there's, I think that'll probably happen. It's going to depend on volunteers willing to take the time to do it, you know, like with just about everything.
So the right leg could actually handle some of those more complex Absolutely, and there's been there have been discussions that say we must. You know that it's our that it's kind of one of the. Um, uh, there were some discussions about maybe the rad layer is not such a good idea to include in the core until all the core components do support it because we sort of have two different ways of writing Joomla extensions now, right? And um, but so it was accepted this way, but I think that over time there's definitely going to be a movement to push more in there. There might be a little performance hit in doing writing it for the rad style because you're abstracting out some of the some of the, the code work but I don't know if that's milliseconds or or tenths of seconds or what. We're back to this issue of reliability of being able to pick and choose from different components, aren't we? The more that's built Yeah, on you it, bet, you bet. The more there's a tipping point, right? Yeah. That idea there, that's one thing. And the other thing that I like about, you know, the the more we build more momentum towards that is that you know, one of the nice things about open source is being able to take a look at the code and learn from it. And so um, right now we've got thousands of extensions that are built kind of the classic Joomla way. Right now we maybe have a half a dozen extensions that are built using the RAD way. And so the more we can build up a bigger library of RAD components, the easier it's going to be for all of us to say, hey, I want to add that kind of feature. Oh, I see there's a RAD example of that. I'll just follow that. That'll be better, too. Presumably, as we build up a library more and more, the RAD layer can be improved. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, how mixable is this? Um, so for those of us who have components in the field, um, can we start to use it uh, in a incremental way or would it be a rewrite of the component to use RAD? I mean, say adding a new feature which means a new table, um, how easy, easy would it be to use RAD for that bit and then start to work on the rest or is it really you do it one way or the other? If it was, if I was, if I was consulting you, I'd say do it one way or the other and so maybe take a short term hit to rewrite your existing component um, to support RAD so that that new feature could support it too. Just on that, you know, it might work and maybe you can discover for us, but you know, like I think we're hearing in some different places and ways that, you know, because it is pretty new, we haven't really tested and validated all those things out. Probably worth a try just to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. All right, so um, we're out of time. Thanks for your thought, attention, questions, and um, come see me if you want to get some more shortcuts to those links and stuff. But, um, thank you. Thank you.